I am the Chandra Kala Associate Professor, Triple E Department from Ishwar Engineering College. I am happy to invite you all for this webinar session on Cliff of Iceberg EV Market. Now I would like to invite our HR sir to give the welcome address. Good morning, very good morning to all the members present here. Um, on behalf of Ishwar Engineering College and the Department of Electrical and Electronics Engineering. and on my own behalf i would like to welcome all the members present here for this webinar on cliff of iceberg ev market first of all i would like to welcome mr nadan vice president marketing and mr srinivasan head embedded system and bms of sosali technologies private limited welcome you sir Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, I would like to welcome all the participants from uh, different parts of the country who have shown interest in attending this webinar. To make a note, I would like to tell that our department is conducting a series of webinars. About twenty-two uh, webinar series are being conducted. Already ten numbers, eleven numbers are over. and we are also having another 11 numbers on a pipeline and to make an important note we are very happy to inform that this webinar session is made live in youtube so the participants can make use of this facility in future for reference also so this is very important uh, milestone and today's uh, webinar on the ev market it is very interesting it is most needed of the r because the global evs ma uh, ev market as well as the indian government has also set lot of uh, target for 2023 about uh, all three wheelers they wanted it to be uh, operated by battery and by 2025 almost all two wheelers also they wanted to run in the same mode and by 2030 they have a set a target for the whole country so at this juncture this title is very important and very interesting i'm very happy to invite you all for this uh, webinar session and also congratulate the coordinators mr chandra kala associate professor triple department and mr vignesh ap triple for organizing this uh, webinar session so once again i would like to welcome all the participants and the speaker thank you have a nice day thank you sir now i am happy to introduce about our speaker mr vidyanathan sir he has 17 years of experience in wipro and 4 and a half years of experience in tech mahindra and he has stayed across multiple countries usa japan france and middle east currently he is working as vice president in embedded and industrial iot market in socialy technology private limited welcome sir welcome now I'm, now i am handing over the session to nadan sir thank you guys so good morning to everybody i would like to say good morning to the professors assistant professors lecturers and research associates and also the young dynamic students who are joining this session i just want to make sure that slides are available for you all of you are able to see the slides yes sir it is available it is it is available it is seen so we can able to hear sir no problem No, no. I'm. I'm only looking at the slides. Are they available for you? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm just starting. So my company is predominantly building reliable, innovative IT solutions, and the primary purpose of this, as you know, as professors have told us, this is the emerging technology. Today, the entire thing, as as we go along, moving productivity, productivity, effort, it is both hardware and software. As we go along, we may not, we may find tomorrow that we may also have those gadgets which are embedded into our body to track our health aspects. So, going on to slide number two, let me give you the quick introduction of our company. Start. We started in the year of 2008. 
that's a time when the GPS and GPRs or the technology we use to escape us. We develop our own product for managing the school buses, the students, which time they are getting into the bus, which time they are getting out of the bus, how the bus is going in, tracking them. All of them we have developed the solution. And we have, we have we have completely you know done it for education institution and this company got sold to an American company. We have further down the enhanced into the social 2.0 where we started developing product in the battery management area way back in 2013. At the time battery management was not at that you know at the very initial stages. So what we have done is that we developed the whole own embedded product. We are talking about you know today the in India. Making that we are doing it, developing our own product, developing our own software and started enhancing battery management software. Today you have an opportunity, the same person is part of our company and we're going to take you to the next you know aspect of the new content is skills. Is primarily you know, we charge for the battery management area. Moving on to that, even another area we charge, it's another area is healthcare, because India needs the healthcare important. Make India product from the healthcare, especially in a hot that is what we have started in 3.4, where we develop the wireless CCTV product. It's a very compact as we go along and spend a little time on that. And now we are in the social equipment group where we are trying to develop these two aspects and also do a lot more, a lot more engineering work and the certification which are required to make our product internationally known. Slide number three, please. You will be wondering who is the man behind this. Back in 1996, this is the first company where he has entered. We were developing compilers. Cobol compiler, Fortran compiler, Pascal compiler, C compiler, everything crashed. We were competing with M at the time. So that's a company I happen to be like students like you, I happen to work under him. So we call him as T.S. Vardaraju. He has nurtured many new people. There are a lot of people like me who have been brought by him and they are all across the globe. And he also, he also nurtured another company which is around 2004 market capital, which is on a BPM form, and now he is nurturing us. He is incidentally he is the first MTech graduate from IIT Madras. So that's a kind of an energy impact. You get surprised even now he is active. When he comes to the office, he comes to the board. You really see him joy. I still enjoy his time. That's the reason why I joined him after 33 years in the IT industry. It's amazing to work with him. Let us look back, what are the kind of uh, divisions? Slide number four, please. We have four major divisions for this company. The battery management system, so Larson is heading the group, which develops, you know, typical different types of batteries, the monitoring, entire battery health, the incident, resistance, health of the battery. That's what is being done. And not only that, we have been doing a lot more, you know, IP related work on this battery management area. And going next to the division, as we talked about, is predominantly on the health care division, which is which is predominantly which is being held by Dr. Mutu, who's not in this call. He's a man behind developing ECT based product, which is you know I think you all know healthcare is another major concern for a country like India. Every ten minutes, one patient dies of heart attack, and then. Behind these two, there is a lot of software required, and that is where we have a geek available in our organization called Bujwal, who is predominantly focusing on developing anything on software, anything on internals, anything on operating system. He's a man who can do that work. So we have all the three people strongly, technically sounding the entire 100 plus team of our organization who are entering the group. And Chegan happens to be part of the Visuals team. And not only that, we do, we also do a lot more customized embedded product, which consists of basically on a hardware and software, wherein we have been working with companies like Komatsu, companies like Chemtech, companies like CSIRO Australia, and, and True Color. So many of, many of these companies are typically R&D based companies which are across the globe 
and then not only that we are focusing lot more on the projects of department of science and technologies we do lot more work on the you know hardcore area and on the logistics area and also the companies like lucas studios godrej hudson kune priti isha you know hyundai kocha technology many more of these companies we have been predominantly working with Let me quickly touch on the engineering aspect, which I think many of the engineering students will be much more interested. We are doing lot more product development, and on the cloud platform, I think which one I talked to you about really deep onto the cloud. We have our own private cloud, and also on the digital services which we are doing on the private platform. Moving on to the slide number six, I will touch very quickly about a hardware product. This is a very compact 125 grams weight of the product, which is 12 core wire, uh, ICU based hard ECG system. Where the competitors for us are Philips, Siemens, etc., which will be predominantly pretty high in cost here. And this entire thing works on a mobile. The ECG data will come on the mobile for us. So that's quickly about this product. So let's we get on to the next slide where I. Introduce to you what is this EV market is all about. Slide number seven, please. This EV market, as the professor has already introduced to you, that it is disrupting everybody. It is disrupting the way we have been thinking about it. I think way back, you know, long, long ago, when I was a kid, I used to go to school by the cycle, and then we need to commute between one point to another point in my village. We used bus, we used bullet car. And also the houses, if we want to have little more people, we can go a little faster from point A to point B. Remember, all of them are no fuel, no AM. And then in the year of 1908, Ford Motors have come in and developed the automobile, and that's where the automobile engineering started growing and manufacturing started growing, and that's where the gasoline started moving. Now you see the kind of multiple cars. Which are available with you? You name about Maruti 800, sedan, SUVs, hyper Jeeps. You know, you name anything. Ben, BMW, all of them are running on gasoline. Either it is petrol or a diesel. And most of them, they are very interesting to drive. Very, very, you know, very. I think youngsters love to drive those vehicles, sports cars. But the fact remains that they are polluting the environment. Now we all seen after the COVID nineteen how clean the environment is. So that's where now when the greatest to think about. I think Elon Musk. Everybody knows. Him. I think I you know, as students, you all should go and look at his land. Go to his pride. He is a man who has changed the EV industry. Now the EV cars, Elon Musk, Tesla, Model Three and Model S. Completely driven by electric vehicle, no pollution, zero emission, and can it can can also be like a sports car, like a Porsche Taycan. All of them are available. So what it essentially boils back for you that everything comes back again. So zero emission, long long ago. Now all these EV cars are zero emission, and now they are not stopping at car. You will soon find out the aeroplane will be driving it. Ships will be driving on it much more on. So I do want to introduce now a topic to you, Srinivasan, who is part of our team, is going to take you and will make you spend. And then you know you will also know how this EV technology is important. Now the internal combustion engine, predominantly the automotive automobile engineering, may not even exist anymore. It's only electric motors, electric vehicles, and electric bikes, and scooters. And most of them, even the washing machine, everything will be on electric as a go. So now I hand over my the mic to Skin Master. Go to Skin Master. Thanks a lot for your time. Guys, enjoy your time. Very, very good. Thanks a lot for you for engineering who are who are given an opportunity to interact with you all, young young guys of the century. Thanks a lot. Go on to Skin Master. Skin Master. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nathan, sir. Thank you. Now I am glad to introduce about our speaker, Mr. M. Srinivasan, Project Manager, Industrial Automation in Sosale Technology Private Limited. He has completed his UG degree in Anna University and Master's Diploma in Business Administration from Cambridge University. He has received his 
Indian Management Fellowship from Cambridge University. He manages project management, workforce management, operation optimization, R&D, and product development processes in Socially Technology Private Limited. Welcome, sir. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you. Now I am handing over the session to Sri Devasan, sir. Hi, everyone. Um, this is uh, we are going to present about the EV vehicles. Uh, first of all, I uh, thank uh, Chandrakala Madam and uh, her team for conducting such a wonderful uh, webinar, uh, which will be useful for all the engineers out there. So I will uh, go with the presentation and the agenda what we are going to discuss uh, today. I will present the screen. Um, Uh, Madam, is the presentation visible? Yes, sir. Okay. So first, uh, I would say we will go like um, we will explain about what we are and what we do. Then followed by it, we will be uh, explaining about EV related projects that we are handling, and then EV markets in India. And EV uh, global EV market and its uh, opportunities, and then what would be the future for EV vehicles? So, if I go to the first slide, so in uh, social technologies, we have been uh, handling projects like uh, as listed below in the screen. We uh, make uh, data loggers. Data loggers is nothing but a logger uh, which uh, logs the data and then uh, stores in the uh, system. So GSM gateway is a protocol, uh, any kind of protocol can be converted into a GSM protocol data and can be transmitted to any uh, machines. So next, the uh, universal scanner, because most of the sensors available in the market uh, will be like voltage, current and then resistance. These are the uh, major uh, things that are going to give the data. So we made a universal scanner where any kind of sensors can be connected and can be used and the data can be logged also. So then comes the uh, project uh, Aquastic Pulse uh, Reflometry uh, Infection uh, System. So in the, this is a non-destructive testing type where in, uh, used in chemical industries uh, like in pipelines. So you have to just check whether the pipe uh, is healthy for the um, uh, process because uh, in chemical industries it is hazardous to uh, use a damaged pipe for uh, um, uh, taking the gases. So uh, we come up with this project. This is a Singapore based project that we did. Then comes the sedimentation analyzer, which is uh, um, uh, we, we did it for CSIRO uh, Australia. So th this uh, sedimentation analyzer is um, uh, uh, like mineral identification in the sample that we put into the machine. Before inventing, uh, before this instrument comes, it generally takes 30 days for a, 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 any mining industry uh, to check whether their ore or mineral is available in the uh, mining uh, area. So, but uh, after the invention of this uh, device, now they are doing it in 30, to, uh, 30 minutes to one hour of time, they can get all the details and they can decide whether they can proceed or not. Then comes the cloud-based IoT devices that we are uh, using. So as uh, Nathan has told, uh, we already have our IoT devices in our uh, stores and we are using our own cloud to uh, collect data. Then now only we are getting uh, entering into the EV field. So now I'm saying uh, we are using motor in, if you take EV, major parts are like motor and battery. These two are the main things. So first we, uh, we uh, did the applications for uh, motor applications then battery management systems. Then we came up with the ultimate IoT kind of a project uh, where any type of sensor, as I told in universal scanner, this is also a universal device where any types of devices can be connected and can be directly given to the cloud. Then comes uh, kitchen automation. 
so uh, which we are doing it for philips and preeti uh, so future how the future uh, cooking would be we are in the later slides you will be seeing uh, what are this uh, what are we talking about here and we did even a uh, ac indoor uh, unit for uh, lucas tvs so me and my team this is the entire team uh, working on the projects so uh, if you see these are all all the members most of the uh, team members are less than 30 years so why i'm saying this because you people are uh, in uh, some of the members are just uh, um, uh, from college so why i'm saying this because you these people are making things that are uh, being sold in the market so these are all young and powerful people similar uh, like uh, you people so i at the end of the video i will be telling you what are the ways you can start doing your projects and uh, approach the companies so at the time i think you, you people can note those note down those things and uh, start implementing it so that you can get into your um, uh, core core uh, industry so first uh, We, uh, we did it. We did this for uh, uh, SFL as a group. So this is for water pump. We did it for 100 watts and 400 watts, uh, 12 volt and 24 volt. So next the BLDC motor. This also we did it for Lucas TVs, uh, and even we have our own products for uh, BLDC motors. So where we are using it for um, uh, e-bike, e-cycle, e-rickshaw, and e-vehicles also. So for a e e rickshaw and all uh, e bike and all, you might be needing one point two kilo one point two kilowatts kind of thing. Um, we have eight hundred watts also we have, and then um, if you go a little bit higher for e rickshaw kind of thing, ten kilowatt is uh, what uh, currently expected. So ab above that also you can go if you are planning for some other uh, uh, higher end uh, vehicles. Then comes the battery management system. Which we are very strong in this line for for the past uh, uh, from uh, year 2008 we have been doing this so we are very strong in battery management system in e vehicles this is going to be the major thing uh, motor and battery these two are the things going to be uh, main thing but why we have uh, used IoT inside this because in future so there are so many uh, algorithms um, uh, statistics information artificial intelligence everything is going to come in. so for that we have already in uh, used the ultimate iot where the bms data are collected and uh, stored in the um, um, server cloud server i will show you in a future slides uh, how we are doing it for, uh, in real time then we did a smart stove which is a uh, now think about the, at your home you have this stove you can uh, cook it from your mobile why would i cook it from my mobile you can ask <laughs> because if you are seeing watching some movies then you can at the time you can put the um, stove on to your uh, mobile mode and then you can just reduce or increase the um, uh, burner uh, intensity and then start cooking it not only that future is going to be like sharing the uh, in uh, apartments and uh, oyo kind of thing they will be using sharing of uh, uh, gas stoves so future is uh, we have just used the uh, Uh, this kind of uh, appliances in our kitchen where the western countries have already turned uh, around 50 percent they are using it like this next comes the production software as we are doing so many products we have a product line and uh, our own product line and we are giving doing r d for the uh, other companies also so we have a production software designed for by ourselves for our needs then as you are going into documentation and uh, certification Uh, if you are into uh, automotive field then this areas is what you have to look at it so we have a special uh, special division for that so this is our whole team working on uh, these main uh, projects so if i uh, so okay let me say how we are uh, getting at, uh, we got attracted towards ev vehicle and what are the projects we have been handling okay see if you take uh, e vehicle uh, industry the component list is huge okay and the standard regulation regulation regulations everything are high and that's the reason we selected uh, some of the products that we are already having uh, some experience in it so we have selected motor bms then comes the cluster uh, design 
this cluster design is uh, nothing but a odometer kind of thing which is going to come uh, tell you all the information about the vehicle while driving so motor and bms anyway it is going to communicate with the cluster design then comes the engine control unit and variable control units i will tell you how we uh, we have gone to this uh, uh, one by one so this is how uh, it has led to this uh, ev platform so here in the ev market as i mentioned about uh, we are using so many components we'll go by one by one what are the components we are uh, uh, taken into care so here battery management system see battery management system if you take uh, previously it was like mostly lead acid battery then it come uh, came as a lithium uh, lithium ion uh, uh, market boomed up and uh, nowadays people are using lithium ions but in future technology it can be of any alternative for lithium ion because lithium ion we are getting it from uh, uh, china maximum so if you want to get rid of that then uh, government has some plans for uh, tie up with bolivia where they have uh, signed some orders now uh, future things will be uh, we are will be getting the lithium ore from the uh, bolivian country south africa so any technology it might be any chemical any thing they can use but for a vehicle some energy has to be stored and that should be in the battery format so we have uh, we have decided that battery we will concentrate on the battery management system so if you take battery management system uh, there are two types like sbms mbms is what we categorized right like sbms is nothing but static bms battery management system mbms is mobility uh, battery management system so in static management uh, battery management system it is i inverter and uh, nbms that is bms for inverters so there is a small video for this comes the mobility bms so mobility bms if you take uh, it's a forklift bms truck bms car bms e rickshaw or ev or auto bms is what we classify so there is one video for that Vehicle breakdown is caused by battery failure. The role of the batteries have changed tremendously. 
Today's vehicles are complex systems loaded with many electronic equipment. The heart of it all is the battery. It powers everything from the vehicle's ignition to permanent vehicle electric system to onboard entertainment systems. Although battery technology has evolved enormously, there are several factors that can affect battery lifespan. Extreme temperatures. Harsh climate conditions. Frequent short distance driving. Or simply not using the vehicle for a few weeks can slowly kill the batteries. Waiting for battery breakdown makes no sense. Checking batteries does. Introducing. Soslay battery monitoring systems. The available BMS types are Car BMS e rig BMS Forklift BMS Auto BMS Truck BMS Soslay BMS allows monitoring of your vehicle batteries 24-7 and can be viewed from anywhere through cloud integration. See insights of your batteries all time and proactively address issues to maximize life and minimize downtime. All BMS types are designed and managed to easily integrate with your vehicles to save the battery life and to enhance the safety of the vehicle. Soslay is excited to share our experience on BMS and to safeguard your vehicles. In so uh, that was about uh, battery management system. So mainly, um, uh, what is the difference in uh, uh, SBMS and MBMS is SBMS is static. We won't be getting uh, latitude and longitude uh, uh, GPS locations. But whereas in uh, mobile BMS, you will get the GPS location. Um, motor, uh, if even you can have a, a driver fatigueness uh, detections. So those data can be uploaded to the cloud, and you can see that. Second component is like um, motor type. What are the motor types we use? Maybe this is related to your uh, curriculum. So design architecture. This is how the motor, uh, motor control unit would be designed as. Like in a microcontroller, you will be having a hardware unit where the motor drive logic is stored. So what you, uh, drive logic is nothing but actually an algorithm that moves the motor. So six step open loop, six step closed loop, five, uh, FOC or otherwise FOC closed loop, uh, such kind of algorithms can be used. Why there are different types of algorithm? Because uh, one algorithm would be better than uh, the other algorithm in some particular part of, say for example, uh, if the, uh, while starting the motor, some algorithm is efficient, then and the other, uh, other algorithm is uh, good at uh, when the motor is started running, then we will use both the algorithm to start the motor and as well as to run the motor. So you can use that way also. So then you need a gate driver IC, which is called as a pre-driver and uh, which amplifies the P PWM signal to optimum level for the motor. So this connection, this charge pump, signal uh, conditioning, everything, all this voltage amplification regulation are all controlled over uh, that MOSFET. So MOSFET is a field effect transistor. So it controls or amplifies the load current to be passed to the motor. So for, to get the feedback, what is the speed, uh, which uh, coil is energized, for to sensing all those things, we have all sensor, that is like all effect sensor. So that is uh, kept at the rotor, um, fitted to the rotor, where you can identify which uh, uh, coil is uh, energized and you can change, you can use it for the algorithm. Running the algorithm, you need this all sensors feedback. So what are the motor applications that are available in uh, EV? Like engine, coolant pump, seat alignment motor, HVAC motor uh, control systems, power steerings, all these uh, uh, things I mentioned is all done through brushless DC, uh, DC motor, BLDC motor. Then comes the wiper motor or uh, power window motor, auto start, all these things can be done brushed DC motor. Then other types of motors can be used like alternator, like for uh, if you take a power regeneration mode. So whenever you are applying uh, a brake, that energy can be re, uh, recharged, uh, used, it can be used for recharging the battery so that you can use that energy for later uses. So uh, for that alternators are used, oil filter motors are available, driving motors, 
and ABS, handy lock braking systems can also be used. Motors can also be used. This one is for a power steering uh, um, example where steer assistant algorithm is stored in the control system. The sensor sense the torque, how much force or torque the um, driver is applying to the steering wheel. Then the algorithm com computes and it gives to the assistant, uh, assistant circuits where it, uh, the sensor values are uh, taken and uh, steps are taken. So this is the reason why even uh, in olden days they have used to steer the steering uh, two to three times to take a turn. But now with a single finger, uh, finger movement you can do the process. So this is through that only. The PWM signal is uh, related to the assist motor based on the assist factors. And this one is the ABS. So a, a DC motor is fixed to a hydraulic pump in ABS. Uh, the uh, wheel speed sensor sensors because all the wheel has to be running in the same speed. Okay, we can even call ABS as anti instead of anti lock braking system. We can even call as anti slide braking system. This will this will protect your uh, vehicle from sliding. So it will give you a good uh, control over the vehicle while driving. So the, for that, all the speed of the uh, all wheel, uh, wheels has to be measured. So sensors are placed on the wheels and the uh, speeds are measured and the hydraulic pump is used to apply the equivalent uh, rotational force. So in the motor types, what are the motor types? If you take uh, induction motors, permanent uh, magnet synchronous motor, PMSM motors they say, and BLDC motors are commonly known motors. Uh, but uh, in recent years, Tesla has also tried this uh, reluctance motor, which is going to, uh, which I feel like it is uh, going to be uh, a new, uh, new invention in the EV uh, sector. So I will show you some video for that. Here, if you see that there is no magnet here, only the uh, 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 design that makes it rotate. So, uh, this is what the motor section is all about. Then comes the cluster management uh, system. See, cluster is uh, what the data user is going to see. So it is it uh, varies from uh, tab to sophisticated LED display. We can make components out of it, and this is the component where not much players are involved because even the vehicle manufacturer themselves will take care of this cluster design because they want to customize it according to their uh, will, uh, wish. So that's the reason it is not been uh, captured by other vendors. So and as we have already done some motor application and BMS uh, for the last years in our company. So we thought uh, cluster would be the uh, best uh, next uh, next product for us because that is going to communicate with motor and BMS. So this is how the cluster looks. This is from uh, Ather Ather bike. This is how it looks. So the, uh, if you take a little, let's uh, time travel for a while and check how the interface would be in future. Navigation, your calls can be attended. So whether your vehicle has been topped up or not, all the information will be uh, received. It, it will be get connected to your mobile and you can get the alert messages. Then engine control units and others like CAN communication, CAN lean communication bus is very important for the automotive uh, industry. And then AC control through algorithms, wireless TPMS that is tire pressure monitoring system uh, is now uh, very much famous. And then driver fatigueness detection and control can also be done. So uh, in future, Uber, Ola, all those companies would be requiring such. It would be mandatory for them to uh, fix this uh, driver fatigueness detection. 
so even if it detects the driver is tired it will not give him the order ensuring your safety so this is a uh, one line the other components like infotainment systems where communication with other cars communication with the gadgets uh, itself music video head up display head up display is useful for uh, uh, committing your uh, vehicle and telematics telematics can also be used with the help of the cloud so uh, for all this uh, cloud telematics everything we have our own setup here at office and uh, as we are now uh, sourcely now has done the motor applications and uh, battery management systems and other its respective uh, uh, ecosystem completely with them then we have started approaching the oems so if you take oems this is uh, uh, in india these are the oems for two wheeler bajaj auto hero honda yamaha kawasaki so these are the companies even royal enfield are now uh, doing some work in that electric e bike so these are the our uh, oems and these are the four wheeler or passenger vehicles oems in india so th these people actually we approach these people and get projects and we do it so this is what all about who we are and what we do and what are the projects we handle let us see about what is uh, indian market is having for us so if we take india what are the startups these are the startups like ether oxa altavile spiro so these are the companies they are already into market now and they have their model being tested and working fine so if we take ether these are all first developed by students like you then now it became a uh, product i mean as a competitor for big uh, players so ether orax orax then ultraviolet these are our sports bikes actually see sports why we were not uh, before we have not uh, ev has not entered into sports bike because of the power requirement but as there are so many motor design has come up algorithm uh, driving algorithm has come up now they have uh, entered into the sports bike also so spiro this is a lower end model so uh, with a gray lcd display also it can be done so these are all the startups companies okay now okay let me say i have started the um, uh, manufacturing the components who are where i am going to go and get approval from so regulatory authorities or regulatory boards in india and opportunities and policies will be uh, displayed below so ari that is arai automotive research association of india which is in pune maharashtra icat international center for automotive technology haryana then grc global automotive research center oragada this is in tamil nadu so where we can approach uh, natrax is the national automotive test tracks it's in indore madhya pradesh and naiimt national institute of automotive inspection maintenance and training it's in uh, assam see why i am saying all these names because these uh, regulations now what they have decided is they are now concentrating um, um, uh, universities like uh, colleges and universities where they can they are ready to uh, teach you and uh, educate you for the uh, upcoming uh, e vehicle era because now currently there are no workers or uh, there are no skilled labor to attend that market even starting from repairing to uh, manufacturing to repairing everything there is no manpower at all so what the government has decided and guided them is so what they have guided them is uh just to approach the universities and train the engineers so that uh, in future they will have manpower for doing this so what are the opportunities of ev business in india so you can right from cycle to um, truck you have the opportunities listed there in 19 uh, 2026 to 7 million now uh, we are hardly seeing some of the e vehicles in road but in future if it is 7 it is going to be 7 million to uh, 2 million like this kind of huge numbers then it will be a good huge business also so 
over the pulse of uh, political structure even though you have some technology or things well, uh, our government has to support the uh, development otherwise it will be of very slow improvement now as the government is supporting in all the uh, ways like niti adyo ayog you see uh, through that they are uh, supporting all these things so you will get uh, 50 percentage kind of uh, uh, help from the uh, government and to start with so this is the regulatory bo boards in india and policies that is helping us to go with this and say let us assume lithium lithium is not uh, obtained from any other place like china only we are getting now government has signed with bolivia and gone for lithium ion but let us assume even that uh, in worst case even that is not available then what is the future of uh, e vehicle lithium ion no lithium ion alone is not a source we have sodium ion vanadium flow aluminum air uh, air fuel cells zinc carbon ion these kinds of not i have just listed 10 but there are so many uh, available uh, alternative source for, for uh, battery manufacturing so what is the growth what would be the growth in india expected to increase more than 30 percentage see this is not the uh, figure that i am giving it is given by reputed uh, people and uh, they have the record for that how it would go for 30 total ev market india is having uh, two wheeler that is e2 w is nothing but electric two wheeler electric four wheeler heavy electric vehicle and then three wheeler electric three wheelers so all these things has been listed here most of the things are using lithium ion and lead acid this is this chart only shows about two types of batteries think about the other 10 things 10 battery uh, opportunities that i told we are having that much uh, opportunity here and electric vehicle sales figure so see if you see 2015 to 16 this is what the level 16 to 17 is little bit higher than before but if you take 17 to 18 see the it is double the amount of uh, sales in two wheeler market so that is the reason if you see uh, in our facts and figures if you see india is now number 1 in uh, two wheeler sales if we have actually overcome uh, overtaking uh, china in two wheeler sales then if you take india is uh, now is at number 5 now but moving towards number 3 in overall global automotive manufacturing sector so this is the statement given by the Uh, authorities so okay let us talk about what global ev market is uh, giving us so the uh, throughout the whole world if you say what are the brands we have all these are all very big brands and they are having r and d centers they are looking for uh, people who is uh, experienced in this line who have some certification course when talking about certification course Uh, the regulatory authorities in india i told every them every one of them are uh, conducting a certification course where you can join and then get benefited so these are the uh, companies even they are now inventing in all the things like like in algorithm they are uh, doing r and d in motors they are doing r and d in batteries they are doing r and d so each and every uh, company listed there i have shown you here are working on all the plan all the pla platforms to improve the ev vehicle so uh, global market is uh, really a promising now looks promising for me so what are the okay now we we uh, we uh, saw about what are the authorities or uh, uh, people who are looking at the cv vehicles in india what about global in global iec international electro uh, technical uh, commission and iso international organization for standardization un the united nation so these are the list of uh, uh, authorities they are working uh, to regulate this uh, industry so how would be the growth for globally country wise let us see first see now already in 2018 norway has reached its 49 percentage of its uh, uh, sales uh, vehicles uh, purchase uh, power of the country has grown to 49 percentage 
then followed by iceland sweden netherland finland china like that there are so many um, uh, growth so much of growth in this uh, field okay now let us see brand wise growth what are the brand wise growth tesla renault bmw so these are the companies uh, actually uh, growing every day every day in fact so this is the total uh, uh, ev market uh, in the uh, globe let us see what would be the future for the uh, ev vehicles future is immortal like uh, what would be the public transport what would be the logistic kind of thing that we will see in a short video you saw the video so wh what we could see is now uh, people would be like uh, traveling to one location to another city by catching two or three buses but if this transport comes into action nobody has to get down from the bus but they will reach their office so they don't have to automatically they can just switch over to the seats and then they can go to their destination so not only this even the package industry uh, courier and courier service industry like there are so many companies uh, sending some goods that goods can or uh, it, it itself can uh, accommodate uh, to the uh, cost will be spent on that so this is one time one kind another logistic is like this one so this is how the future uh, logistic would be like if now as you are picking up a uber ola kind of thing future would be like you are uh, booking a um, passenger drone and getting into it and it could be a shared uh, passenger uh, transportation and you can reach your destination okay now we have seen uh, what is in uh, we are doing what is india is doing what is the world is doing and let us now talk about what you are going to do from the next day onwards so where to start from because in most of the presentation what we would think is okay presentation is good what what uh, next year what i am going to do so we have uh, in our office how we developed uh, like how we approached the ev market we had some struggle and we have noted down them to help uh, the future people uh, so uh, i will uh, take you take you to the next slide like where to start from so this is where you have to start from as a student you won't be having uh, uh, sophisticated uh, uh, boards or otherwise uh, uh, licensed softwares and uh, other things that you to develop any small application also so that's the reason i have just tabulated here 
see here this is these are the evaluation board that we ourselves has done some hands on uh, testing or checking what would be the better one for the uh, ev industry and uh, i have listed it down for you this is the st microcontroller nxp microchip and other uh, same st microcontroller but another uh, model so i have listed it here so it is the board configuration also i have listed what is the input voltage what is the algorithm being used whether the software is free or licensed what type of motors can be used with that everything is listed there so you can note down this and then uh, start working from tomorrow onwards and you have all the software um, firmware everything available for this to get started immediately and you will get a help from the people uh, company people themselves so if you have any queries you can anyways contact us so i uh, finally i want to thank uh, chandrakala madam for uh, giving this opportunity to give the presentation for this because always there was a lag between the uh, students uh, and academy students and the industrial people the, never the industrial people were entered into these two uh, in between these two uh, lines and that was the actually gap between the gap in the industry now i think uh, by this uh, kind of uh, webinars i think uh, this can be uh, reduced thank you madam thank thank you sir any questions hello can you hear me sir Start. hello yes yes yeah, yeah. proceed sir uh, actually my name is m gautam actually i am an assistant professor in sellum college of technology namakkal okay sir uh, actually i am having one question sir yeah so in your presentation you had said that uh, in battery no, management proceed? system uh, yeah oh, okay i am proceeding uh, in your presentation sir uh, you had said that uh, in battery management system uh, we mostly used a lithium ion battery yeah so what is the uh, reason why we are using uh, this type of battery especially uh, when compared to other types see uh, previously they were using lead acid battery but uh, the requirement is like uh, in ev particularly in ev if you take uh, the current uh, draining current, current it has to deep discharge the battery which is not possible in uh, lead acid battery you have to deep discharge you can do deep discharging in uh, lithium ion Sure, sure. fast charging because we cannot uh, put the vehicle in 8 hours charge to drive the vehicle for 4 hours okay at least if you want to drive the vehicle for 4 hours the charging time should be less than that at yeah, yeah definitely sir one by 10 percentage of it should be the charging time so these yeah. are the parameters uh, people made people to go towards uh, searching for another uh, earth materials like lithium ion mm -hmm. or um, uh, chemical uh, uh, chemical formations so that okay. this can be achieved okay 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 sir i understood and i want to uh, say thanks to uh, the isuri engineering college and uh, you sir it's it was a wonderful wow. session sir thank you oh, thank you thank you so much sir good morning this is dr kuvirasi from digital Yeah, ma'am. Yeah, ma'am. Sir, it's a very nice presentation, actually. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks, really. Ah, uh, sir, is there any opportunity to provide certificate courses for the students sir, from your side? Ah, uh, no. From our side, we uh, we uh, we have to consult with our management. But there okay. are. There are. I think there is some echo. There is some echo. Yes, sir. I can hear you, sir. Yeah. Both who are not speaking, uh, they can put the uh, mic on mute. Mute. Okay. Okay. So, uh, see the uh, the regulatory bodies that I have mentioned. Each and every one of them, each and every one of them are having some courses to be taught to engineering students, particularly. because they now need manpower the old uh, old people i would say like uh, who were already uh, were working in a previous uh, version of uh, automotives they have to reskill or otherwise 
they have to go look for a new skilled person so reskilling is also a easiest way they are trying like uh, giving training for already who are uh, who are into this uh, automotive field and uh, giving training for them to uh, immediately acquire some manpower but for a long run they are actually concentrating on colleges new people where they can directly in their syllabus they can uh, or otherwise in the project kind of thing they can take them as a interns interns do the tra- give the knowledge train them and get them into the um, field uh, on board into the company that is what the new trend is going so i think it's a good uh, opportunity for uh, people who are uh, now entering into the field and for and answering your answering your question uh, the certification can be uh, you can go to the to any of those uh, reg- uh, regulatory bodies i have mentioned they have listed the courses they have even uh, in our chennai there are some uh, uh, rai uh, pune's uh, branches in chennai where they are giving direct certification so you can go to their website and uh, see what are the courses they have and which one you are interested and please proceed with it participants any other questions hello sir yeah Uh, sir my name is tirumaran i am from kishore engineering college uh, tender sir b- ultraviolet as a battery swapping no sir uh, they have battery swap technology yeah, yeah, if exactly. one battery drain out they can replace another battery correct, uh, correct. does it have effect on the battery sir does it affect the battery system uh, see swapping of battery is a different uh, uh, approach why they have brought the battery swapping technology or uh, facility to the system because see nowadays uh, e vehicles are manufactured at uh, some cost and they have restriction to sell the ev vehicle at lower cost you can put your mic on mute so that it will be audible f- uh, from my side okay oh okay see um, battery swapping why they do, do it because now the uh, ev ma- manufacturers cannot uh, manufacture the bike at lesser price only because battery is taking the uh, lot um, uh, huge part of the cost of the vehicle so now what they do is they will sell the uh, e vehicle without a battery and ask you to swap use the swapping system they have so you will pay a rental for the battery so by this way what happens is the vehicle cost is coming down it becomes affordable to anyone anyone can buy e vehicle and if they want to uh, commute at that time they will take a rental only the battery they will take as a rental and proceed with that wasn't it a nice idea yes sir so that, that's the reason the swapping uh, of battery uh, battery swapping concept came into the picture oh, okay sir uh, another doubt sir uh, if the companies uh, use a proprietary battery i mean a proprietary source of battery means uh if uh, they they have to buy only from that company no sir no no that would not be in the future because the, these regulatory bodies that i told they are making it more uh, easy they are trying to make the ev vehicle easy to penetrate into the system so they will not uh, uh, even if you take ether ether bike they have come up with the bike they have their own um, station charging stations but in their char- charging station you can put your own battery and charge they are allowing it it's a very good uh, initiative taken by them allowing us to charge their batteries through their uh, system okay so in future it will not be like any proprietary kind of battery and all okay sir okay. thank you sir thank you very much sir yes Hello sir. Yeah. Hello sir. This is Sham Sundar from Bangalore. Yeah, Sham Sundar. Yeah, sir. Actually, we are going for the e vehicle uh, due to the due uh, to reduce the pollution. That is the okay. uh, aim, aim, aim for that. But if battery got gone, it's example if the battery lifetime is gone. 
and then if where we have to dump the waste battery that is a very big issue you are talking about e energy or green energy like that we are talking but uh, if the battery lifetime is gone how to dump the battery without harmful effect for the public for the people that is yeah. my question sir yeah good question actually because this is where now um, uh, regulatory authorities are uh, trying to ma- e waste management or battery ma- after use battery management all those things they are bringing into uh, point okay um, now currently they did not have much uh, solution for that but almost in uh, uh, we cannot say that uh, e vehicle is eliminating um, pollution or kind of thing it is eliminating the pollution from city i would say okay but anyway this energy for charging the battery is uh, uh, generated from somewhere right for there at, uh, it should be like a, if it is a, a hydro power plant or otherwise a, um, a wind wind energy or solar energy it doesn't matter but apart from wind energy and solar energy or natural uh, renewable energy if they are uh, producing uh, energy and storing into the battery it is nowhere uh, pollution control pollution is being okay. shifted from city to some other place that's it so okay okay but for the other other point that you have mentioned about uh, how to uh, manage the waste batteries is a very good question actually people are working on it uh, almost they are trying to increase the battery life so that uh, if it is goes in 2 years they are making it to go by 5 years is this is the first approach they are doing so they are trying to uh, uh, increase the battery life so that this can be within that time we will come to some uh, conclusion that how to handle this properly okay, okay, okay. because uh, if the if you see the growth, growth chart it is like exponential form so uh, we have to take action immediately so that this exponential growth will not affect our uh, environment back so okay. in that point they are very much uh, concerned about and they are taking steps okay sir okay sir and then one more question sir what about the charging units sir because nowadays uh, in bangalore only two three places they are having a charge yeah. charging unit but people what they are telling the charging unit it cost more uh, compared Correct. to the uh, other thing yeah. okay see for that's what i told about where you as you are in bangalore you would have seen uh, ether ether bike uh, yeah sir yeah yeah, yeah. okay mm-hmm. they are giving their uh, charging station to charge other batteries also not only yeah. them and now government will uh, people are like uh, as the uh, projection of ev vehicle is high even the petrol bunks are now asking that uh, they need a charging station to be built in their location because it is going to take very less place but at the time they will get revenue is what they okay. they are approaching the government but government uh, in the regulation pa- bodies what they have mentioned is you cannot keep it with uh, petrol petrol pumps nearby yeah yeah but you can uh, build a wall as per the specification that we are saying and you can okay. have it there okay okay so as wherever you are seeing now petrol bank in future it would be uh, having the e vehicle charging station also okay sir thank you very much sir for your kind answer thank you sir hello hello sir yeah Sir, uh, this is Thomas Sundar from Salem Hall Engineering College, sir. Uh, yes. Sir, I'm, a, I'm from Mechanical Engineering uh, uh, department, sir. So, I have a question related to battery, uh, uh, as far as fire safety is concerned, sir. Is it, uh, is it being uh, completely uh, ruled out or uh, is, it, is it safe, sir, as, as far as uh, fire, fire is concerned, sir? Fire perspective is concerned, sir. No, we are talking about something about battery. Ma- I am getting battery it. Cooling system, battery cooling system, the battery cooling system. Is there any? Is, is that uh, the problem of fire is completely uh, taken uh, care of, or uh, is, is there? Is, is it under research, or it, it's being completely uh, uh, taken care of? Sir? So you are talking about battery cooling system. Yeah, that's why. Uh, yeah, battery cooling system, EV vehicles. Sir. Yeah. Do you have some some uh, some references about being a uh, battery is being a uh, uh that fire uh, uh, safety is being uh, compromised like that some news is being uh, coming uh, here and there so it's it being completely uh, taken care of sir see if you are talking about cooling system okay yep yep yes sir. whether if it is a battery cooling system or engine cooling system or a peripheral uh, alternator cooling system any cooling system that will not go away from automotive at all because as long as automotive is there it will be running 
and heat will be produced and there must be some uh, ways to cool it down so cooling system or oil cooling system should be there in any vehicle even the vehicle goes sophisticated maybe the produced might be less but surely heat will be produced is required and it is a must it it won't get eliminated i think lithium ion batteries are they completely safe or is there any problems will be occurring in the future yeah there are a few a few hazards in using lithium ion but through battery management system see now we are seeing as a whole battery okay but actually battery is consisting of each cell inside it okay there is, there comes a requirement for cell level monitoring Yes. so if you do not monitor the cell level properly the battery might get exploded okay yes. Yes. So cell level monitoring is another uh, uh, area that people are concentrating there are some algorithms for uh, balancing the energy between the cell and uh, to taking care of such hazardous uh, bursting kind of thing it will not happen if the, it is some proper algorithm or system or circuit has been done for cell level uh, monitoring of a battery so i think uh, it's it is hazardous but through technology we can make it easy thank you very much sir thank you yeah. next presentation sir thank you sir. <laughs> anybody hello godan raman hello sir proceed proceed hmm. godan raman sir i want to know the uh, life span uh, life span of the batteries not is used in eev sir yeah uh, as in the discussion i told uh, it is uh, uh, two years are kind of thing but uh, they are tra trying to uh, increase it by five years 10 years also Sir, uh, for three years we have to change the batteries, or there is a maintenance for it. Uh, in lead acid battery, they had some uh, options, but in future, uh, it would be like uh, uh, there will not be such uh, options, like uh, recharging it or uh, uh, repairing it and using it. It will it will not be useful because it ultimately it will not be optimized for the operation. and it will cause issues only maybe some new technology should come uh, so that the battery life get extended it will not but because it is not sufficient 3 years is not sufficient for the amount you are putting in so it should be increased and it will be done thank you sir yeah thank you sir Anna. Okay, now I would like to thank our management principal sir, HOD sir, for giving this opportunity to conduct this program. Speakers Northern sir and uh, Srinivasan sir for his enthusiastic speech. This will be more informative for us. It will be very useful. Thank you Northern sir and thank you Srinivasan thank you, sir. I thank Mr. Jahan Northern, BMS Analyst, Socially Technology Private Limiters, for support to conduct this program. He is the alumni of our institution. Thank you Jahan. Great work. I thank all. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. I thank. thank you.